And good afternoon everyone and welcome to the webinar. This webinar is about how to do more public speaking and it's one of the things that I encourage people to do. It's one of my take home messages from the majority of my workshops. You need to get on your feet and speak to people more often and for two reasons, to become more confident and to better deal with your nerves and your anxiety. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is to become more effective, more engaging as a speaker, more able to respond to the audience's needs. And it's not one of those skills that there is a magic antidote, a magic pill, and someone can do something for you or you attend a one day workshop with me and all of a sudden you are cured of your fear or your 200% more engaging. Most of my workshops, as with this webinar, they're best considered as the start of a journey and taking away a few things that you can now use, but you need to do it more often. So this is to give you an idea of how you can do some more speaking. As usual, I just run through a little bit of housekeeping in terms of the webinars, ask questions anytime type into the dialog box, the question box, or put your hand up if you've got a microphone, preferably a, a headset microphone so there's no background noise and I can open up your microphone and you can ask me a question. Don't confine what you say to questions, make comments. Take notes as we go and I think most importantly apply the content to your own personal situation, your own circumstances. And a good way to do that is to look back on a previous opportunity, a previous speaking assignment and could have you done something different as a result of what you've learnt today? I guess that's looking backwards. Looking forwards, if you've got something coming up, you've got a speaking assignment, a seminar to run, what could you do differently or what could you include from today's webinar that would make that presentation more effective. So it's about applying the knowledge that I give you. So why do more speaking? And I mentioned the fear. Susan Jeffers said, the only way to get rid of a fear of doing something is to go out and do it. And this does not only apply to public speaking, this applies to lots of other things, further education, relationships, uh, taking risks in financial investments, those kinds of things. So the only way to get rid of a fear of something is to go out and do it. Now I interpret this to mean a fear that's holding you back in your life. I don't interpret this to mean a fear of, of everything. Uh, I have a fear of jumping out of an aeroplane with a parachute. I have a fear of jumping off a bridge with a lackey band around my ankles. That is bungee jumping. And I have no intention to do bungee jumping. I have no intention to, to jump out of a plane. In fact, I think it's crazy. I don't understand it. And it's not holding my life back. I did have a fear of public speaking for a long time in my life and that really impacted on me. So job interviews, being asked to present some of my research and some of you know I'm a medical scientist, being asked to present some of my research at a conference in Singapore and saying no because I was too busy, really I was lying to myself and lying to my boss, I was too afraid. So where fear is holding you back, you need to go out and do it. So you need to do more speaking. In terms of skills, Anthony Robbins, Awaken the Giant within Tony Robbins, famous author, probably the number one paid speaker around the world. Tony Robbins says repetition is the mother of skill. In other words, the more you do it, the easier it gets, the easier it becomes. The more you do it, the more confident you become. The more you do it, the more skilled you become. The more you do it, the less ums and ahs you use and the less mistakes you make. 
This is why you need to do more public speaking. Now, just to confirm, public speaking is not an occasional skill. Public speaking is not something you can do really well and then not do it for six months and hope to come back and be as effective and as confident as you were six months ago. So public speaking is not like riding a push bike. You can't just get back on it. If you want to be really confident and really effective, I want you to get on your feet once a week. If you would like to use the bicycle analogy, public speaking is like getting on your push bike and training and then competing in a road race between Caratha and Port Hedland or from Perth to Perth and Bunbury and back or from Melbourne to Bendigo and then back. That's what public speaking is like. So you do the preparation, you do the work and you would then compete. Now let's say you didn't ride your bike for another three months and then all of a sudden you are asked to compete in that race again. Could you get on your bike and be as fast and finish as strongly and get the same position in terms of your in terms of the bicycle race as when you were practicing every week. So you know every evening you'd go for a ride on a weekend you'd ride a couple of hundred kilometers. So public speaking is like that. You need to develop the skills and enhance them, but you need to keep working on them. So it's not really an apple a day, but do a presentation a week. That's my challenge to you. Do a presentation once a week. If this beast called public speaking called presentation skills is important to you, then get in the habit of speaking once a week. Really quite simple. That is the secret to success. I'm not sure if anyone's read a book by Malcolm Gladwell. The book, and Malcolm Gladwell, Malcolm Gladwell is a social commentator and he's written several really good best-selling books, Tipping Point, uh, Outliers, Blink, What the Dog Saw. Malcolm Gladwell in his book called Outliers looked at what made people successful and he looked at the Beatles and he looked at Steve Jobs and Bill Gates from Microsoft. He looked at elite sports people. He looked at lawyers, uh, elite violinists and the one thing they had in common was 10,000 hours of practice and that's how they became good. 10,000 hours of practice. So I'm just encouraging you, if this is important, part of your journey needs to be do more, to do more of it. Most towns that I know of, even Caratha, has a Toastmasters club. Certainly Bendigo does. Uh, cities like Melbourne, Perth, Sydney will have between 30 and 50 Toastmasters clubs. So it's about getting on your feet once a week really important if you want to be more successful, more confident and have the impact. So moving forward, so to steal a phrase from Nike, just do it. You need to immerse yourself in public speaking and as I said once a week, but how do you do it? What are some of the things you can do? First thing is volunteer to chair more meetings. Let's say you don't even chair the meeting, volunteer or bring something to a meeting. So put an agenda item in, but bring along something of interest. Bring along a special case report. Bring along a journal article that you've found that the Canadians are doing particularly well in or the Brits are doing extremely well in this area and stand on your feet so you're at the meeting, stand up and go to the whiteboard, the flip chart or data projector slide like I am and just walk up and just point to something. Point to a trend graph, some bar charts, uh, a Venn diagram, 
just a cartoon or some sort of image, the mere fact when you stand up, everybody's eyes will lift, they'll be looking at you, you're now doing a mini public speaking opportunity. And you may feel nervous at first, but if you start to present something each week at a meeting or you volunteer to chair a meeting, then that's a mini speaking opportunity. And after you've done it for a while, you'll become more, more, comfort, more confident and more comfortable and more effective. Do more community presentations. Lions clubs, Rotary clubs, Apex clubs, Probus clubs, Rotaract clubs, sporting clubs. They often have keynote speakers, guest speakers, certainly Rotary clubs in Perth, some of the clubs meet for a breakfast meeting and I've spoken at the Belmont Forum Club at 7am. They wanted a short, sharp 15 minute presentation. I've spoken at an evening club at the south of Perth Yacht Club. They wanted a 30 minute presentation during the dinner. Find a club, a community group that wants the occasional guest speaker. Now the topic you speak on doesn't have to be your work topic. It can be something you're passionate about. It can be something you have some interest in. You can have be something you've got some skills in. I know a, a podiatrist who also loves the thought of mindfulness and learns mindfulness and shares her passion and her knowledge around mindfulness. And that's just one of the things she's brought into her own life. So being present, being in the moment and just experiencing what's happening and silencing the internal chatter. Mindfulness is really good for controlling nerves and being more present when you're doing public speaking. So that's not her area of expertise. She's a podiatrist. She can probably talk about diabetes and, and gangrene and other you know, fungal infections of the feet and how to care for the feet. But she's also got this little thing on the side. Join a public speaking club. I mentioned Toastmasters. There are other public speaking clubs around Australia. Toastmasters, Rostrum, R-O-S-T-R-U-M. The Rostrum is the, is the lectern or the podium that you stand behind. It's also called a Rostrum. There's a club called the Penguin Club in most of our cities. The Penguin Club I don't think is in rural areas. Now let's say you don't have a Toastmasters club in your town, but there's probably sufficient people and sufficient interest to start a Toastmasters club. So contact a Toastmasters club that's closest to you and it may be a town 200 kilometres away. Certainly in Western Australia it could easily be 200 kilometres away and someone will sponsor you and help you put a club together and you only need 12 to 25 people and you've got a Toastmasters club going and then all of a sudden once a fortnight or once a week depending how frequently you meet you've created that speaking opportunity and the best thing about Toastmasters and Rostrum and Penguin is you get feedback. You get feedback on how you went, how many ums and ahs you spoke, whether you use the platform effectively whether your gestures or your body language are not congruent, not adding value to what you're saying. Because when you volunteer to chair more meetings or when you do more community presentations, you're doing more of it, but you may not be getting the feedback that helps you grow and change and eliminate things or include new things to make you more effective. Toastmasters is brilliant. With the chairing meetings or doing community presentations, you can always get someone to video record you and then you can review that and give yourself feedback. Speak at pre-start or toolbox meetings or safety meetings. I do a little bit of work within the mining sector and I know that most mining sites every day they have a pre-start meeting. And that pre-start meeting is when the safety rep will bring up two or three issues. But he will also go around and ask everyone if they've got any other things they'd like to raise. 
some groups, some organisations have lunchbox meetings or toolbox meetings. So why not once a month organise a brief lunchbox meeting during your lunch hour where you invite people from different organisations, they come to the lunchroom and someone, two or three people present a short five to ten minute business related information as you share a lunch. You bring your lunch you bring a lunch along. So it's about creating an opportunity. Take on a speaking role in a sporting club. So sporting clubs need presidents, they need treasurers, they need membership secretaries. So if you take on one of these roles, what you'll do is you'll find yourself having to speak more. You'll have to give reports. The treasurer's report, the membership secretary's report. So these are just some of the ideas that I have come up with and I've spent time living in Narragin, which is remote, not really remote, Wheat Belt, West Australia, two hours south of Perth, Manjima, three and a half hours south of Perth, Carnarvon, which is 10 to 11 hours north of Perth, and I've had to keep my speaking going and sometimes I would just have to create my own speaking opportunities. I'm going to pause for a moment. Any questions, any comments, any other ideas that I've missed that you see where you could speak? Let's say if I implored you or imposed upon you to speak once a week, what other things could you come up with that might give you that opportunity to get on your feet and do a, a two minute, five minute, even a 15 minute presentation? I'd be really keen to find out what other th things people are thinking of. Tutorials at university, yes, often with uh, at universities with a semester you might only have to do one or two tutorials and then the next week it's the next person's students but certainly when you do a tute that is a speaking opportunity and when I went to university I did not, I refused to do tutorials because of my fear of public speaking so they made me do an extra written assignment but that's okay so yes tutorials. Some universities have debating clubs so you're going to be practicing debating and that's really good because you'll be speaking on a topic that, that may not be your area of expertise. Okay, are there any other ideas that people have conjured up where they might be able to speak? Yes, you can, you can create a small business that requires you to speak and I know that uh, someone's put in Amway and you know I'm not into network uh, network marketing or whatever they call it but I know my daughter is a really healthy person and she likes to do a lot of fitness things and one of the things she is involved with is called Herbalife and Herbalife does help helped her lose a lot of weight but she's also into the vitamins and I know that she has to stand up and speak at particular meetings because she's relatively senior. So that's another opportunity that she's created outside of her normal work where she now finds herself speaking. They ask her, Sarah, can you come to a meeting and will you do a quick can you can you do a quick update or can you do a quick uh, testimonial? What about informal settings? Can you expand on that a little bit more, please, Tara? Now, certainly, yeah, a speech. I was going to say my daughter's 21st birthday party, my daughter's wedding speech, which was in September last year, uh, at parties and even at funerals. Every now and then people are saying, would anyone else like to stand up and say a few words about about the beloved person. And I've had an opportunity to speak at my best friend's 
mother's funeral, but I declined through fear. So that is that is a start, but what I'm seeing with the special occasions, the parties at, at the gatherings, someone retires from work, they're very spasmodic and occasional, but certainly they will add to your bucket, your bucket of speaking opportunities. So if you do have an opportunity to say something at one of these informal gatherings, yes, stand up and say, look, if you don't mind, I'd like, to, I'd like to say a few words as well. So thanks for that, Tara. Okay. Let me give you another idea, which is not this idea, but I remember going to a conference in America and it was a speakers conference. And they said, if you want to do more speaking, then you need to speak more. So sometimes in the professional world, such as myself, where I earn my living speaking, to become known, to be to raise my profile, I need to volunteer to speak for free at conferences. So I know there's meetings all around rural West Australia and they're looking for keynote speakers, for guest speakers, even breakout sessions. So find what are the conferences coming to your area or is there a conference, if you're a rural person, is there a conference happening in Perth or Melbourne that's going to coincide with your weekend break to the city or your annual leave and just, just submit a paper and find yourself doing more speaking. So volunteer to speak at conferences and you may not get paid and then I, my aim is to do more paid conference speaking and I did a couple of paid gigs last year and I've got a couple of paid conference speaking sessions organised for this year so I'm gradually becoming known as a keynote speaker but you need to do more of it, you get exposed and people know you. What about virtual public speaking? So I'm doing a public presentation now uh, to you guys all around Australia. Why not record a podcast? So one of the things I do is I have a digital audio recorder and I put my headset on and I put it in my pocket and I start recording and I just walk around and I talk about particular tips and my podcast series you can see on my website and it's free and you can download it through iTunes. I did a chapter on, I did a series of 10 chapters on how to overcome your fear of public speaking. Do YouTube videos. So sit in front of your webcam and now you're seeing your body language, your gestures and you can also review that YouTube video yourself or that recording before you post it on YouTube. When you put it on YouTube, you're now in the public domain and people can look at you, they can criticise you, they can praise you, they can like you, they can dislike you. But all of a sudden, you're doing a mini presentation. And when you post it to the public domain on YouTube, you're there for everyone to see. And you can invite people to go and see those videos. Skype sessions. I do coaching via Skype and that enables me to take my one-on-one -on -one coaching to outside of the city of Perth. I can do coaching via Skype, do an audio recording. So once again, this is a presentation and video recording. I've got a, an audio book that I've made on how to write a killer speech you know, how to write a speech that's really going to nail it and have impact for you. And I had to sit down in a studio with the microphone, the pop, the pop filter. You know how sometimes when we say puts, it comes across a little bit, you know, puppy, uh, sort of poppy, and the pop filter, so really scary stuff. And then the recording engineer tells me, one, two, three, go. And I'm now speaking, being recorded, trying not to make any mistakes, still trying to be natural and authentic. So don't eliminate virtual presenting from your repertoire of doing more public speaking. You can record just about all of these presentation types. You can record a Skype session. 
you can use Camtasia or some other screen capture software that will record your Skype session. I record my webinars for future use. So there's some other options for you. Uh, Skype is free. YouTube is free. Podcasting is largely free. I have to pay to run webinars. You can do cheap video recording using your smartphone. You can do cheap audio recording the way I do my podcast or you can do professional audio recording. So it doesn't have to be expensive. As you move forward and you do more public speaking, now remember your, my goal is to get you speaking once a week. Once a week. So sometimes you've got to take some risks and volunteering to chair more meetings is taking a risk. Volunteering to stand up and present a little case study is in fact taking a risk. Sending emails or letters out to Rotary Clubs, Lions Clubs, Apex Clubs saying that you are an expert or you have knowledge in this area and if they're, if they're ever interested you'd be happy to come and speak to their group for free. That may take some risks. So part of building your capacity, your confidence and your effectiveness is about stretching and expanding your comfort zone. This little fish is really getting out of his comfort zone. In fact, he's put it all on the line. Uh, I sometimes ask people, is the little fish going to make it or is he going to fall short and die? 90% of people say, well, of course he's going to make it. This is a bigger, brighter, new world. There's a lot of experiences. There's a lot happening out here. But to get to where you want to get to, sometimes you need to take risks. Some risk taking may be required in your public speaking journey. So take it carefully with the risks, please. I don't necessarily believe in jumping in the deep end and drowning. I would rather you take a small risk. So speak to five people at your meeting. And when you become a little bit comfortable, join a Toastmasters club. And then when you've been in Toastmasters for maybe three months, six months, and you're feeling comfortable, join a speaking contest in Toastmasters club. I'm going to be in Karatha in February and I know Toastmasters are having one of their public speaking competitions. So this is not a normal Toastmasters meeting, this is now ramped up where you're competing against other speakers. Then agree to speak at a conference, a state conference. And once you've done all of these for a while, what happens is your zone of comfort moves. So once you've been speaking at your meeting you know, for six months, 12 months, this is your new zone of comfort. And then you go to Toastmasters. Once I've been to Toastmasters for 12 months, I have no fear over Toastmasters anymore, and this is my new zone of comfort. So I have to do more. I have to go to different Toastmasters clubs, and all of a sudden people are asking you to coach them and to teach them. Now, I'm not saying that's what you want to do, but all I'm letting you know is that as you grow, and take on a little bit more complex, um, a little bit more fearful tasks as you move through the hierarchy, you're also building your public speaking skills and who knows where it might take you? Who knows where it might take you? So as you do more public speaking, do expand your comfort zone and gradually ramp it up. Don't make the mistake of coming from absolutely afraid of public speaking and jumping into doing a national conference in front of 2,000 people. That's really tough. That's possibly setting yourself up to fail. So next steps, my challenge to you, how are you going to do more public speaking? How are you going to gradually expand your comfort zone and get on your feet once a week? I'll leave that to you. We did have those other occasional social settings where you can also speak and just try and think and as you wear a pedometer for, for walking and counting your steps, each month just review how many times did I speak this month and if it was zero or only once, then 
what can I do to increase the frequency at which I get on my feet and speak. As always, feel free to send me any further questions via email. I've got another webinar coming next week. Uh, it's how to connect and build rapport with your audience. The connection is really important. Like me on Facebook. Uh, connect with me via LinkedIn. I also do some posts on LinkedIn, some tips on public speaking. And if I can be of any assistance, it would be my pleasure to help you in your journey to public speaking success. But please do remember, it's the next steps that matter. It's not how good the webinar was or whether you found this useful, it's you implementing and taking the next steps. Any final questions, quite happy to take them and then we will 